Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now, what have I got for you? Lovely lot today. Well, although I'm a big fan of painting outdoors or en plein air as it's known, I also think it's a good education and of course great practice to paint from photographs as well. I do it all the time. So we're going to be having a go at painting this lovely little garden gazebo. And I'd like to thank Sonia from Canada who sent this photograph in. Now certainly the danger of working from photographs, and I know I'm guilty of this, is that we try to be too literal. We try to copy things too exactly. I know that I can be painting away and think, oh, I haven't quite matched that green exactly, or I haven't quite got that angle right. But at the end of the day, does it really matter? Because your viewer is never gonna have a look at your original photo reference. So today's lesson is all about loosening up and just making photographs your own. So. Come and join me and we'll paint this lovely little gazebo step by step together. Okay, so for today's materials, my paper is some Arsh cold press. It's 140 pound, 100% cotton. It's on a block, so it won't need stretching, but any decent watercolor paper will do. And my colors today are Cadmium Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Cobalt Blue, Payne's Grey and a little touch of magenta and just three brushes from my range, three quarter inch flat, number 12 and a number six round. Okay, so now let's look at the photo reference. Now there's an awful lot going on. Lots of clutter, too many rocks. We certainly don't need to put them all in and perhaps we can make more of a feature of the pond. And definitely all those trees we can simplify into a wet and wet background, helping to draw more focus and detail onto the gazebo and bridge. Now we must get into the mindset of not copying the photo religiously. Use it purely as a guide and inspiration. It'll only frustrate you otherwise. Here is the pencil sketch. And as always, this is free to download from my website. Link in the description below. Okay, so I try to avoid masking fluid if I can, but painting around the white bridge is going to be quite tricky. So I'm masking out the bridge only. And remember, don't use your best brush. And screw that lid on tightly. Off we go. And today I'm not wetting my paper first, but I'm just going straight in with a very watery wash of cobalt blue, leaving the odd gap of white paper. And a little touch of reflective blue here in the pond. So as I said earlier, way too much detail in those distant trees. So let's simplify it all. Nice wet and wet wash. So making sure my sky has totally dried and then using my flat brush and re-wetting the complete area with clean water carefully around the gazebo here. Then I'm using my normal mix of cadmium yellow and cobalt blue for all my greens, obviously adding much more cobalt blue in for these bluey greens. And again, obviously much more yellow for the more yellowy greens, but also letting a lot of the paint mix directly on the paper. And just splatting in here gives me that randomness that you couldn't achieve any other way. The background is still obviously very wet, so I'm getting lots of lovely wet and wet blends. Just letting the paint do its thing and not fussing and fiddling too much. And you can see how much easier it is here having that masking fluid and painting around the bridge. So now that's dried, I'm coming back in with a much lighter yellowy green value to help give contrast between this bank here and the bank behind. I'm also dropping in some darker values along that bottom edge, including a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm doing a very similar thing over on this side, but really trying to alternate between my yellowy greens and my bluey greens. Really exaggerate the contrast. 
here the sharpened end of my paintbrush just to scratch and score in a few details. Always looking for contrasts between my different greens here and again not trying to look at my photo reference too much or you'll get bogged down in trying to match it. Right, I've gone mad, let's throw in a bit of magenta, just for fun. And here I've just added in a little bit of burnt sienna, just to exaggerate the differences in my greens. So let's put in this, um, now I'm going to use my vast knowledge of botanicals here, said no one ever, this um, hosta possibly. So I'm adding some lemon yellow here into my mix just to get a really bright fresh green. And here I'm dropping some blobs of clean water into the damp wash just to create some cauliflowers and back runs, which should give me some great effects. Okay, so next for the dirt area, I'm starting with a watery wash of yellow ochre. Then I'm using a mix of my burnt sienna and cobalt blue for the darker brown. Next, for these rocks, just like in the photo, I'm going to alternate between very bluey greys and very warm reddy greys, just by altering the amount of burnt sienna and cobalt blue, and dropping in darker values into the bottom edge while they're still wet. And here, just lifting out a highlight along the top edge with a damp brush. And I'm not painting any rocks which are next to each other because I don't want them to bleed into each other. Here for the path, you can see this is a very bluey grey, so I'm just simply adding a lot more cobalt into the mix. And for these dark shadows, I'm just using some fairly concentrated Payne's grey. And here through the bridge I'm just using similar colours for these rocks and little bits of foliage which is just to suggest the continuation of the pond. For the base of the wooden bridge I'm just painting in with yellow ochre but dropping in a little bit of burnt sienna. Now we need to let this totally dry so it's a perfect time for a short break and as it's 10.30 in the morning I've got a nice strong Italian blend coffee. Now for a few trunks and branches using my number six brush one long sweeping stroke and of course leaving the odd gap here and there for the foliage to come through. And I've no idea why there's a bit of tape stuck on the end of my brush. Thank you. 
lifting out the highlight side here with a damp brush and also adding in a really dark Payne's Grey value on the right hand side for the shadow. Back to the rocks, now the first few have dried and just continuing on in the same way. Again, painting in warm and cool greys with my mixture of cobalt blue and burnt sienna. But also adding in to some of the mixes here and there, some yellow ochre. And doing the same again here, lifting out those highlights with a damp brush, just to give that sense of light. So it's always a great trick when trying to render rocks and make them look realistic is to put that sense of light along the top and then a shadow along the bottom and one side. You can see here the shape of that grey rock is really accentuated by putting in the dark shadow of the rock above. Right, I think it's time to remove the masking fluid and I'm just using a rubber eraser here. Okay, so let's make a start on the gazebo and I'm starting with a very watery wash of Payne's Grey and I'm still using my number 12 brush. Getting these washes in fairly light, lots of water. Okay, so now I've switched to a number six brush for all the shadow side of the wooden bridge and still using the Payne's Grey. Now I have noticed that with several papers that after removing the masking fluid and applying the paint, you tend to get this slightly grainy texture to the washes, which I don't mind, but it'd be interesting to know why. So back to the gazebo once that first wash is dried. And just glazing or layering another wash on top here really helps to give that 3D effect. And when that's dry, I'm now coming back in with a darker value, this time using my number six brush for these details. And I'm really loading up the paint here with a much darker value to create a shadow side on the roof. So here under the roof, I'm just leaving little gaps for those little roof supports. Thank you. 
And I'm not trying to be too neat and precise with these little window panes. I do like a few little wobbly lines here and there and little gaps missed out. And getting a few little graduated effects just by dropping paint in wet and wet. Right, so now the pergola's finished, I'm coming now in front with a nice strong green for a little bit of foliage here and there. Now for a nice strong Payne's Grey for these final details on the pergola. Nice quick strokes, keep it looking fresh. As always, less is more. You don't need to put every little tile in. And of course, a nice deep dark shadow under the bridge here. And using the same value to create some nice strong contrast under these rocks. So for these little conifer type trees here, I'm using the dry brush technique, just dragging my brush across the surface of the textured paper creates this lovely effect. So here I'm just adding a few dark green details with my number six brush to the vegetation here, but really trying hard not to overwork this. A few really quick, short, dabby strokes here to suggest grass. Next, with a really watery Payne's Grey, I'm just putting in all those lovely shadows under the rocks. Really helps to give them form and a solid feel.
for the little pond here and I'm starting by just wetting with clean water then dropping in corresponding colours to the above just to help to give that soft edge with the feeling of a reflection in the water. A few more little details here and there, but keep it simple. Of course, we've got to have a little bit of splattering to suggest some texture in the ground here. Oops, a few bits have gone up in the sky here. Right, so now for the grass in the foreground and I'm painting this with the negative painting technique using the dark green shadow to highlight the light green blades of grass and all done with my smaller number six brush. And I think this little wrought iron fence over here is a nice addition, but I'm painting it very loosely, leaving lots of gaps, trying not to be too neat. And a few other further details again, just using some Payne's Grey. So now everything's been painted, you can see I've lost some of that nice bright blue in the sky. So I'm just coming back over top with a nice watery cobalt blue. Okay, so now for some flowers over top. Now I'm going to be using a soft pastel here, but you could equally use some acrylic or some gouache. Now, a lot of you often ask when I'm using pastel in my watercolour work whether I seal it with any sort of fixative. Well, I don't tend to. I'm usually quite careful and it'll either go in my drawer or in a glass frame if I like it. And now for some gooey white gouache straight for the tube for some white highlights and some little improvements here and there. Just rounding off the top of this little wooden bridge here. few little highlights along the top of the rocks. Some little white daisies or whatever they are. So as a recap, working from photos, try not to look too much at your reference. Add in your own features, take away what you don't like and use that photo simply as a guide. It's your interpretation. If we wanted a copy of the original, we could simply take a photocopy. Just make it your own. And we're done. And this one was in just over three hours. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give that one a go. But also, get your own photos out, experiment, add things in, take things out. Just make it your own and don't become a slave to the photo. And as always, the most important thing is to enjoy the experience, relax and have fun. So, as always, please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, it is free. Leave a comment, I do read every single one, can't always reply to them all. And of course, I look forward to seeing you all again next week for another Watercolour Wednesday. Have a great week everyone, bye for now.